Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another 10 pens currently inked up this week. I think let's go through these briefly one by one. We'll go through them in a little bit more detail and then we'll do a writing sample. So from left to right, we have a Visconti Homo Sapiens Caput Mundi. We have a Visconti Homo Sapiens Demo in the blue sapphire. We have a Visconti Medici in the golden black. We have an Anoto and this is the Magna Classic in chaste jade. We have an Anoto Magna Carta. We have a Danny Trio Chinkin. We have a Danny Trio Ancient Dragon. We have a Ryan Crusack Legend 16 in the Dragon Slayer. We have an Estabrook SD Oversize, and this is the Gold Rush Prospector. And then we have a Estabrook SD Oversize in the Cosmic Wine. So I think let's take a look at these pens in a little bit more detail. This is a, a pen that I've had in my collection, I think, since 2017, um, maybe 2018. Uh, I would have to look this up. It's a limited edition of 50, and this was a, a Visconti Homo Sapiens Caput Mundi, uh, and Caput Mundi is effectively Rome is the capital of the world, or some rough translation like that from what I recall. So there were 50 made, and I believe these were for Italian retailers. I think mostly uh, Stefano at Cedar Graf Corsani had these. I think Novelli had some as well. Uh, these are long sold out. Visconti did, for Chatterley Luxuries in the US, make a batch of, I think, another 28. And they had either the... Uh, rhodium silver trim or the ruthenium black trim uh, on uh, the pens uh, this is the bronze version so only 50 made of these it's a power back filler it's a double reservoir there uh, it's a standard homo sapiens it's got the hook safe lock mechanism and it's got the original 23 cap palladium medium nib and i have to say i really love how this pen writes and uh, I've had it inked up a little bit more recently, and uh, I'm still inking that up because I like it. Uh, it is a very wet writing pen. Uh, I typically now actually put a slightly drier red ink in there uh, purely uh, because I find that um, the if I put quite a few red inks in here, it can feather a lot. Um, this is a really beautiful size pen. Uh, you've got the concave section here. Uh, you can post the caps if you want to. Um, they don't really go on that securely. They will do, but it will pop off slightly. So I don't, because it, it's resin, I don't want to crack this cap. So I, again, I just don't normally post caps. I know I say this a lot, but I am not a cap poster. Uh, and But I do know a lot of people like posting their caps. They don't they either want the pen to be back weighted or they just don't want to lose the cap. And I get that and I understand that. But for me, I typically normally put the cap down, normally in front of me, in front of my notepad, or sort of behind my notepad or, or notebook. Uh, so I know that it's secure and uh, it's at the top of the notebook so that I can then um, find it very quickly when I need to put the cap back on. The next pen I have inked up this week is the Visconti Homo Sapiens demo stone and this is in the blue uh, um, I do like this a lot um, this uh, does have the demo stone there so it has a blue demo stone which is glued in and then you have the my pen finial on the filling knob there which is slightly different uh, take uh, that Visconti have used there I'm not really sure what that adds other than you could potentially put your initials there um, I haven't actually tried this, but I think that is probably glued in place. So I'm not even sure that you can actually replace that, um, which which would be a shame if that is the case. Um, but it's a double reservoir. Uh, it's a power back filler. It's a Homo Sapiens. Um, and it has the hook safe lock mechanism. 
the concave section. Uh, it has a 14 karat gold nib on this one, and I have uh, mentioned a number of times in the past that I'm not really a fan of that design on the nib. Um, I, I much prefer the uh, Fleur de Lis uh, from, uh, uh, on the uh, original Visconti nibs. Uh, I don't know what Visconti's intention is, whether or not this will become the new logo or uh, over time, or whether or not uh, this is just a logo that they're playing around with. But uh, I have to say, although the Fleur de Lis is, is a little bit dated, um, I do prefer that, and I do like that uh, on a nib. But that is a 14 cat gold. It's a medium nib. This is a 23 cat medium nib. Um, uh, palladium. And that's gold. The next uh, pen inked up. Again, I've had this inked up for, for a few weeks now. Uh, this is a Visconti Medici. It's a golden black. I really do love this material. It's a stunning material. Uh, it's made of uh, acro silk. Now, that's Visconti's terminology. Acro, short for acrylic or acryloid, and which is another term, and silk because it's got silk fibers in it and it's mixed within that resin or um, acryloid or acrylic, and uh, you get this beautiful, beautiful effect going on there. Uh, it is a faceted pen, it is a power rack, uh, it's a single reservoir, there's no ink window, uh, but you have got the hook safe lock, you've got the concave section. And you've got an 18 karat gold. This is a newer in-house nib from Visconti. And that's a medium nib but with an ABS plastic feed. Uh, something I've mentioned before is that Visconti typically uh, do not do Evernight feeds. They do ABS plastic feeds. And I don't really know the reason behind it. Other than with Evernight feeds, there is a high failure rate uh, in terms of making them. Um, and that might be the reason why they also cost more as well. Um, in the grand scheme of things, it's not a huge amount more added to the cost of a pen. It's probably only 15 euros, 15 dollars, 15 pounds. Uh, it's not a huge chunk, probably a lot less than that, to be honest. But um, yeah, I don't really know why Visconti have steered away uh, from Evernight. Um, other than probably um, in terms of their feeds, the ABS plastic feed they've got there, they have a lot of fins on it and their pens normally are fairly super wet. And typically you would only go for Ebonite feeds or feeders if you want a wet writing pen. And I think Visconti, uh, probably along with Bok, have perfected that ABS plastic feed so much that they probably feel that they don't need an Ebonite feed. The, the Ebonite feed isn't going to bring them much more than what they have now, uh, and it would probably be a higher cost as well. So maybe that's the reason behind it. The next pen inked up here is the Anoto Magna Classic. Uh, lovely silver clip here. Um, and this is in the pearl jade or green. Uh, and this has got this beautiful chased pattern on there. Um, I'm typically not a fan of having uh, names um, written on pens. Um, so I'm not a great fan of Anoto, the pen company there. Um, and also, I think having a blank area where you can engrave your name, uh, although great if you want to engrave your name, I, I think is uh, shouldn't actually be there if you're not going to have it engraved. Um, I do like this pen, though. Uh, it is a brilliant pen. Uh, you've got the Anoto Cat Finial logo there as well and then a blank one on the what would be the uh, blind cap or end cap um, but i do like this chase i do like the silver filling of that chased pattern as well um, this is what really speaks to me in this pen and also the color as well i love this pearl green uh, it has a black section it has a number seven size a noto nib and it's an 18 cat gold nib it's a medium nib uh, it came, um, I bought this uh, second hand, it came as a crisp italic, which I really didn't like. Uh, most of the under of the tipping has been removed, unfortunately. You can see there, it's virtually nothing there. Uh, so I have actually rounded that off and made it from a crisp italic to a stub. Uh, and I'm now liking how it writes, but it does write a little bit more broader um, because of that crisp metallicness that, that was done in terms of flattening out that tipping by the previous owner or Nibmeister. Um, this is a cartridge converter pen and uh, I, I do like it. I, I like that colour and I like 
the chasing on it. Uh, and I do now like how it writes. I didn't like the Chris Metallic. Uh, I, I've never really experienced a Chris Metallic nib uh, on one of my own pens. I have experienced it on other people's pens, and I've not been a fan. And when I when this arrived and, and I realized it was a Chris Metallic, I really didn't like it. But uh, I am now liking it a lot. The next pen inked up is this Honker. I say Honker, it's a heavy pen. Uh, this is made of solid silver. It's the Enoto, and it is the Magna Carta. And you can see here that it actually has parts of the Magna Carta inscribed into that silver, solid silver barrel uh, of the cap. And then likewise, the same here into the body and then you've got a coat of arms there as well um, you don't have the standard Anoto uh, cap coin finial there um, but you have one that typically looks better I think um, it is solid silver it's AG925 uh, and it's uh, British silver as well it has a solid silver section it is a cartridge converter and again it has a number seven size 18 count gold nib this is a fine nib on this one and uh, I have to say, I do like it a lot. Um, so uh, I have that one inked up with me today. Um, it's a little bit more on the thinner side to what I would normally like in a pen. Uh, I typically like a pen a little bit wider like these Visconti's. Um, so it's a little bit narrower, but I think the weight makes up for that narrowness. I don't think I could go any narrower than, than this probably in a pen. The next pen is a Danny Trio. This is a chinkin pen, and chinkin is an art form where you basically etch away and fill with uh, like gold lacquer or or other colours. And you can see here, you've got some lovely petals there on that that sort of bush, uh, the leaves, uh, and you can see that they're green down here, and then they go to more of a reddish colour towards the tips. Uh, very nice and then you have these flowers down here as well um, and then you have all of this uh, uh, writing as well um, and then you have the artist's signature there uh, this is uh, an ebonite pen with yurushi lacquer and then chinkin on top uh, it's a danny trio you've got the danny trio fireball nib there and this is a fine uh, 18 count gold nib and it's a cartridge converter pen. Uh, again, it's Yurushi. I don't post the caps. Um, Yurushi is pretty strong, so you're probably not going to get any marks uh, left. But uh, if you've got threads in the cap, which you're going to have, it could still make some marks on the pen over time. So I don't, that's one reason why I don't post my caps. I don't like scratching things uh, unless I. Like, Things will get my like pens will get micro scratches on taking them in and out of pen cases putting them on a a desk or a table um, They are going to get micro scratches on them But if you can try and avoid it and not put scratches on by posting caps and I think it's worthwhile especially when when you look at the cost of, of, of uh, some of the Yurishi pens as well The next pen here is again another Danny trio and this is the Mackie ancient dragon beautiful ancient dragon here chinese uh dragon uh you've got this lovely sort of silvery uh wind there uh, and you also have this lovely shield uh, and then you've got a flower there i think it's a sunflower maybe not 100 percent sure and then you've got some lovely green sparkly uh, bits there as well and then you have the artist signature uh very strange shape of a pen uh, I didn't think it would be comfortable to write with, but it is very comfortable. Um, it does have a lot of thread. Now, I'm going to actually, um, I've not actually counted this before, so I'm going to do one rotation, two, three, four, five. Five rotations, which is a lot uh, for a pen cap. I'm not entirely sure why there's five, but um, it is what it is, I guess. Um, it has a uh, number six size Danny Trio 18 cat gold fireball nib, 
Uh, this is a medium, um, and uh, I do like this a lot. It is a cartridge converter, but it does feel very comfortable in my hand. Like the bulbous part here just rests in the crook of your hand, uh, and I just think it actually just feels right to me. So I do like that size. Um, I'd love to understand from Danny Trio at some point, was this actually uh, a uh, design or was it just that somebody messed up the shape of a pen at one point and actually realized, actually, you know what, this looks quite nice and feels quite nice. Um, but I have that one uh, inked up with me this week as well. And another dragon here, we've got the Ryan Crusack Legend 16. And this is in the Dragon Slayer. So you have a lovely scrimshaw here of a fire-breathing dragon and a dragon slayer. Uh, this is all laser etched onto Antler. And the cap here is made of wood. And you've got the uh, dragon scales uh, or bird. Uh, it, to me, it looks like bird scales. But uh, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to depict uh, dragon scales. Um, and that is uh, again etched or carved onto uh, the wooden cap as well. Now, if I unscrew the cap, uh, you'll notice here it has a number six size Yovo medium nib there. Uh, it says RK on it uh, for Ryan Crusack. It's a cartridge converter pen. Legend 16. If you if you're going for a custom made pen. And the custom pen maker says, oh, it's a 14 or it's a 15, maybe a 13 or a 16. That denotes the diameter of where the threads are. So a 16 is going to be a more girthy or more thicker, wider pen. And a 13 is going to be a more narrower pen. Uh, so this is a 16. And I don't think you get much more than a 16 on threads. Uh, I might be wrong, and a pen turner, but custom pen maker, may actually say to me, hey, no, you're wrong there, Dave. Um, but I have not seen anybody advertising uh, a pen greater than 16 millimeters. I'm sure that you could get a 17, 18, 19. I think the issue there is that if you were to get a 17, 18, 19, the barrel would have to be so wide. In a lot of cases, if it's being made out of resin, uh, the resin rods, I think they only go to, a, I think, a 16, maybe a 20 mil max. Um, so you're going to struggle uh, if you go above 16, I think. The next pen here I have inked up is uh, the uh, Estabrook SD Oversize. This is the original Gold Rush Prospector. Uh, beautiful pen. Uh, the material has real diamond dust inside it. So uh, this is a material uh, made by Mackenzie Penworks called Diamond Cast. And uh, this is a really stunning material. I managed to pick this up from an eBay seller in the US. This is a pen that's been out for a number of years. And I missed the boat. Uh, the majority of the ones being sold at the moment are the non-oversized, the standard version in length and in width. I wanted the oversize. I found a couple of sellers, one in the UK, one in the US. The one in the US actually worked out a bit cheaper than the one in the UK. So I bought it. And um, the photos weren't that great when I uh, on eBay. But then when it arrived, I really love this pen. It's a beautiful pen. So this uh, has a um, metal thread. It's got a clutch mechanism. And you've got the steel Yovo nib there, Estabrook. And this is a fine nib. Uh, it's a cartridge converter pen. Um, and I do do like that a lot. So that one's inked up this week as well. And then the final one, again, is another Estabrook SD Oversize. Uh, again, it's a sparkle. Uh, it's made by the Mackenzie Penworks Diamond Cast material. And this is called the Cosmic Wine. Uh, beautiful material has a lot more um, other than just sort of diamond glitter. I'm pretty sure there are other color glitters in there as well. Um, very interesting pen, and I do like that a lot. Very sort of deep red wine. Um, again, it has the um, metal threads there. It has a number six size Yovo Estabrook steel nib, and again, uh, that is a fine nib there as well. So 
um, that is uh, quite nice so um, I am liking that as well so uh, I have that one inked up with me this week as well so I think with that let's go and do a writing sample so the first pen here is a Visconti Homo Sapiens Caput Mundi so we'll do an ink swatch and I do like the color of this ink um, it's not the original colour that I thought it was going to be. So this is the uh, Visconti Homo Sapiens Caput Mundi and uh, it is a medium and it is a 23 cat palladium nib. And then the ink in here is uh, Pelican Edelstein And it is a, a garnet. And I thought garnet was going to be a much darker red than it actually is. Um, it actually turns out it's a little bit more of a, a lighter sort of strawberry color red. The next pen inked up is the Visconti Homo Sapiens. And this is the Demo Stones. So we'll do an ink swatch here. Um, this is a somewhat wet writer. It's not as wet as the um, Caput Mundi, uh, but this is a Visconti and it's Homo Sapiens. And it's the uh, Demo Stones. I don't know if it's stone or stones. I'm going to, I think um, it probably is Demo Stone, but I'm going to say stones because there's multiple of these colors. Um, it's a medium and it's the uh, 14 cat gold nib uh, from Visconti and then the ink in here is a Visconti turquoise which it's taken me I want to say about five years to get this ink and now that I've got it I actually really do like that color so I am going to probably buy a few more bottles um, I have it in the uh, older style bottle um, and I think I'd like one in the newer style bottle, but I have no idea in terms of stock levels which bottle I'm going to get unless I were to buy it in person and not online. Um, so I don't know. I'll probably put in a, an order for another bottle or two and see what happens. The next pen inked up is the Visconti Medici Golden Black. So we'll do an ink swatch here. And... I know some people will say, yeah, but you really should be putting a black ink in here because it is a golden black uh, name. Although, to be honest, I don't know, it to me it looks a little bit more on the browner side than black. So this is the Visconti Medici uh, and it's the uh, golden black. And it is a medium, it's a newer 18 cat in-house gold nib from Visconti. And then the ink in here is a KWZ Nuki Brown, which is a lovely uh, brown uh, colored ink. The next pen inked up is the Anoto Magna Classic. So we'll do an ink swatch here. Now this does have a little bit of flex to the nib. It is a super wet writer um, and I do like that. Um, and I've just got a whole load of green ink over my fingers. Uh, I guess that has leaked out a little bit. I think uh, that's one of the dangers of fountain pens, uh, unfortunately. So this is a, a Noto uh, Magna Classic. And it's the uh, Chased Jade. And it is a medium and it is an 18 count gold. It's a number seven size nib. And then the ink in here is Diamine Earl Grey. Uh, not Earl Grey. What am I saying? Uh, Diamine, uh, I, I think uh, my um, uh, post-COVID brain is not what it used to be. Um, so this is Diamine 
Apple glory. Uh, there you go. Yeah, I am still suffering from um, post-COVID uh, syndrome. Uh, or a bunch of it is fatigue. A bunch of it is uh, just brain fog um, and, and other symptoms as well. The next pen inked up is the Anoto Magna Carta. So we'll do an ink swatch. And this is a really beautiful uh, um, writing pen. Um, it is a fine nib. And um, I did wonder about whether I should get it in a medium or not. And I decided I would get it in a fine nib. So, um, and I'm, I'm liking the fine nib, to be honest. So this is the Anoto Magna Carter. And uh, it is a fine, and it's a number seven size, uh, 18 cap gold nib. And then the ink in here is a diamine, Earl Grey. Uh, and that is a, a favorite gray ink of mine. And I do like uh, the color of that ink a lot. So for me, that that's a, a winning uh, combination for that pen and ink. The next pen is uh, the Danny Trio Chinkin. So we'll do an ink swatch on there here as well. And this is a very wet writing nib uh, that I do love a lot. It's got a lot of bounce to this nib as well. So this is the Danny Trio Chinkin. I'm not gonna put the full name here. Uh, it is a fine and it is a 18 cat gold nib, but this nib flexes very, very well. And then the ink in here is a uh, Pilot Oroshizuku and it's in a hoe. Um, but because of the way that this nib flexes um, and the, the ink combination, it does feather quite a lot. The next pen inked up is a Danny Trio Machia Ancient Dragon. So we'll do an ink swatch. And I still, uh, I'm trying to run this pen down. I'm not writing with it uh, as much as some of the other pens. So I'm trying to run this ink down. And then once it's out, I will probably put a darker red in here. Uh, so this is the Danny Trio. And uh, it is the Machia Ancient Dragon. And it is a medium and it's an 18 cat gold nib. And uh, the ink in here is Diamine. Oops. And it's Strawberry. But that is a, a very beautiful ink. I'm just going to actually have a look. <laughs> there you go. It is actually out of ink. So that's why it did skip there. So uh, I will now be inking that up with another color ink. Uh, I do think probably, uh, probably maybe Seen Rude Van Vermeer or another one that goes well with Akatamanuri is normally um, uh, um, Akamon Dutch Masters uh Sherlock and Van Jan Steen. So I think that may be Van Jan Steen. I might just do an ink swatch of both of them and, and see which one I would prefer before I actually ink it up. The next pen inked up is the Ryan Cruzac Legend 16 in the Dragon Slayer. So we will do an ink swatch again. Now this is a fine nib. Uh, I love the color of this ink. It's a fiery orange. Uh, it has brilliant shading if you put it in a broad or a stub nib, something that writes really wet. Uh, so this is uh, the Ryan Prusak uh, Legend 16 in the Dragon Slayer. And it's a medium and it's a steel, it's a Yovo nib. And uh, the ink in here is Noodler's Apache Sunset. Now, 
I did re-ink this not long ago, and I just want to see how much ink is left in there. Yeah, I've got almost a full converter there. Um, I, I've been thinking about putting in another Noodler's ink, uh, maybe Habanero or um, uh, Dragon's Napalm. Uh, hence the name Dragon uh, would go nice with a, a Dragon Slayer pen, perhaps. Uh, so maybe I'll do that at once I uh, run that down. The next pen is the Estabrook SC Oversized Gold Rush Prospector. So we'll do another ink swatch. Now this is a fine nib and uh, I, I am liking this. I, I did have to smooth or round the nib off to a slight stub because I did find it was a little scratchy. I found one of the tines was misaligned on this as well. Uh, this was uh, from an eBay seller in the US. Uh, it writes very well now. I, I do like it. Um, but sometimes you do have to tweak the nib slightly. So this is an Estabrook SD. And uh, it's the uh, Gold Rush uh, Prospector. Uh, it is an oversize. It's got a fine, it's got a steel a Yovo nib. And then the uh, ink in here is a KWZ Old Gold, which uh, is a favorite gold ink of mine. Uh, prior to uh, Pilot of Oshizuku in a Ho. In a Ho looks quite a nice uh, flat gold. Uh, this um, goes on a bit dark, but it will lighten up. So when we go through and I read the pens inked up one last time, you'll see it's probably a bit more of a, a muted uh, gold. The last pen inked up is the Estabrook SE Oversize, and this is in the Cosmic Wine. So we'll do an ink swatch here. Again, this is a fine nib. Uh, I decided because I, I kind of like that fine nib. Um, when I bought this one, I would get another fine nib as well. Um, I've got broads and medium yovo, so I could always swap the nib out if I wanted to. Uh, I've got a couple of uh, medium uh, Estabrook nibs as well. Uh, so this is an Estabrook. SD and it's the Cosmic Wine and it is an oversize uh, and again it's a fine and it's a steel Yovo nib and then the ink in here is Diamine uh, Wine Divine which is a shimmer ink but I did when inking this up make sure that I tried not to capture most of the ink uh, sorry, most of the shimmer. Um, and there is some shimmer in there, but it's very, very minimal. So how did I do that? I just didn't shake the bottle. I, I let all of the the um, shimmer go to the base of the bottle and then inked up from the top of the bottle. So I think let's take a look at these pens inked up one more time. So we have a Visconti Homo Sapiens Caput Mundi in a medium 23 cap palladium nib inked up with pelican edelstein garnet we have a visconti homo sapiens demo stones in a medium 14 carat gold nib inked up with visconti turquoise we have a visconti medici golden black in a medium 18 carat gold nib inked up with kwz nuki brown we have an anoto magna classic in chase jade in a medium 18 carat gold nib inked up with diamine apple glory we have an Anoto Magna Carta in a fine 18 karat gold nib inked up with Diamine Earl Grey. We have a Danny Trio Chinkin in a fine 18 karat gold nib inked up with Pilot Wash Suzuku in a Ho. We have a Diamine Machia Ancient Dragon in a medium 18 karat gold nib inked up with Diamine Strawberry. We have a Ryan Crusack Legend 16 in the Dragon Slayer with a medium steel nib inked up with Noodler's Apache Sunset. We have an Estabrook SD Gold Rush Prospector in a fine steel nib, inked up with KWZ Old Gold. And then last but not least, we have an Estabrook SD Oversized Cosmic Wine in a fine steel nib, inked up with Diamine Wine Divine. So there you have it. That's my currently ink pens for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye-bye.